Hey everybody, John here with Cruiser Customizing, back in the shop with our 2016 Victory Cross Country. We've got a whole boatload of parts from our buddies over at Arlen Nest. Today we're going to be hooking this thing up with some new billet floorboards, billet foot controls, and also some billet passenger foot pegs. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, we need to get these factory floorboards and controls out of the way. So we'll go ahead and remove the factory floorboard up front. This one's just got a pin on the bottom. That's going to allow us access to this brake lever on this side. On the other side, you'll have your shift lever and we'll be installing a heel toe shifter on that side as well. Um, unfortunately, some of the bolts are not accessible on the back side of this brake lever. So we're actually going to have to drop the whole mounting bracket as well. It's not that big a deal, just a couple bolts. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we want to do on this factory floorboard here, it's just got a cutter pin right down at the bottom. So we'll go ahead and get that pulled out of the way, set it off to the side. And then it's got a pin that holds everything in place. And also there's a spring right here in the center. That's what's gonna keep the down pressure on these floorboards to make sure they're not flapping around while you're riding down the road. Now, as you pull this pin out, this spring might try to fly across the shop. So just be very, very careful. Also, just a little safety precaution here. We'll go ahead and throw on some safety glasses. All right. Not too difficult there. Go ahead and set that off to the side. Make sure your spring doesn't go anywhere because you're going to need that when we go to reinstall this. So like I was saying, you've got a bolt here that holds on the brake arm. There's also a spring and a connector clevis that goes up to that brake master cylinder. All of that stuff's going to have to come off so we can put the new billet unit on, but not a big deal. It's just almost impossible to get to the back of the bolt there to hold everything in place to drop this out of the way. So what we'll do We'll actually drop two bolts right here out of the bottom of the bracket itself. It's just got hex head bolts in there. All of this stuff goes into aluminum, so it's a little snug at first. But once you get everything broken loose, it goes pretty smooth. Before I drop this all the way out, there is one more bolt right here at the top. That's actually just the adjuster. You can move these controls forward or backwards. That way, depending on whether you're really tall or really short, you can get them adjusted just for you. We actually don't even need to touch that one. So we're just gonna be taking off these two bottom brackets here, your entire master cylinder, all of that stuff's gonna stay in contact. Um, so we actually won't need to bleed the brakes or anything for this, as long as you're careful and nobody pushes that brake master cylinder while you've got it off. I like to support this bracket just a little bit. You don't want it moving around and smashing into the exhaust. So just take your time as you take everything apart here. Um, you can see that I've masked off the highway bars there or your crash bars. That's just gonna keep this from scratching anything as we're moving this bracket around. All right, we'll just set that off to the side, kind of let it hang there. So now we'll grab our Allen wrench, get the right size, there we go. And we'll also need our ratchet again. Just break this loose real quick. I'm going to leave that pin in place for just a second. Also on the back side of this, it's kind of hard to show you, but there's a C-clip that holds in the clevis here on the top. So you can just take a screwdriver, pop this little C-clip out here. And if you do it slowly, it's not going to shoot across the shop and you won't have to search around for it for half the day. Drop the pin out that way. That's ready to go. 
You've also got a spring right on the very back here. Just pop that off to the side, set him off to the side. Now with all of that out of the way, we can slide the pin out. Just comes right out the back side here. Set him off to the side for just a moment. Now we'll just let that hang there for just a second. All of that's aluminum, so it's not gonna put too much stress on any of those uh, brake hoses or anything. Before we mount everything back up, we're gonna go ahead and install this new billet brake arm. This one's gonna go on pretty much in exactly the opposite manner. One thing we need to do first though, on our original, there's actually two rubber bushings in there. We'll just pop these out. We need to reuse these on the new arm. Be careful, you don't wanna tear them up. When you're taking them out, just use your screwdriver, pop everything out of place there. Then we can take those and by hand, you can just kind of press them into the new brake arm. Just to make sure everything's gonna line up okay, I usually take the pin, shove it through here just a little bit. That'll save you a little bit of extra work whenever you go to put this back on. These things are nice and tight too. There we go. So now we can drop this new arm right into place here. It's just gonna slide down in between. Whenever you're putting all this together, just take your time. The powder coating that they put on these can be scratched, so just want to minimize any damage. Drop the pin back in. Like I said before, this one's a bit of a snug fit, but it'll drop through. We'll get the nut started. Before I tighten that up, I'm actually gonna go ahead and drop my pin back in for that brake clevis. Then if you take your time here with this C-clip, it's not gonna shoot across the shop, hopefully. There we go. Now we can go ahead and tighten down that mounting pin here. And before we put everything back together, we'll just go ahead and drop our spring into place. There we go. Now all we need to do is mount everything back up. So I'll grab a couple of the mounting bolts here. Make sure you take your time getting everything started into place. And again, I'm gonna give this just a little bit of support while I'm tightening everything up. That keeps this bracket from moving around too much so it's not gonna slam back into the motor or exhaust, causing damage while this thing's free to move around.
All right, now comes the fun part. The first time you try to put one of these things back into place, it can actually be quite a pain in the butt. You've got two mounting brackets here on the back and this pin just slides straight through. But as you get about halfway, you actually have to take this spring and put it back into place. It's got two prongs on the bottom, flat piece on the top, and that's gonna rest into place, making sure that this thing has constant down pressure on it. So as we work this through, I'll actually start the front of the pin in, and then about halfway through, I'm gonna fight with the spring for just a minute, but I'll get it locked into place. I'll actually push it right from the backside just a little bit, and that's gonna allow me to go ahead and get the pin started through. And then it's gonna go all the way through. I can go ahead and manipulate this just a little bit to get all those holes to line up. So let's go ahead and get this started on the front here. And if you notice, as I start this in, I'm just gonna let it barely start to creep out. That way, as I start the spring into place, there's gonna be quite a bit of pressure as I manipulate that, this floorboard around. So we'll start this in from the back side here. There we go. And that's actually just locked into place. Now, all we have to do is reinstall, reinstall our Carter key. All right. That'll finish us up on this side. Let's go ahead and hop over to the other side. All right, time for round two. It's gonna be a little bit more of the same. We'll replace the floorboard. We're gonna replace the shifter. We're also gonna be replacing the shifter linkage on this side. So let's go ahead and get started. The removal of this floorboard is going to be about the same. Pull that pin out there, try not to lose it. Then we'll slide this pin right out the front. Again, watch that spring in the back. Make sure it doesn't go flying across the shop. Set all this stuff off to the side. And now we've got our bracket here as well. Before I drop the bracket on this one, I'm actually gonna go ahead and disconnect it from this uh, the shifter fork on the back. That's just gonna make sure that we don't damage anything on the linkage rod itself while I'm loosening all this stuff up. Make sure you keep a close eye on all these bolts. Some of these we will be reusing. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate that out of the way. That just keeps it away from the engine case here. Um, you can damage that finish, so just trying to be careful, making sure we're not gonna scratch anything on this brand new bike. All right, with everything removed, you can see that there's a 10 mil bolt right here on the front of the shift linkage. We're gonna go ahead and remove that because we will be replacing the shift arm. We're also gonna go ahead and remove the shifter as well.
always with the wrong size Allen wrench. All right. Set our bracket off to the side for just a moment. And again, one of these plastic bushings fell out, but we're gonna be reusing those on the new shifter. So we'll go ahead and knock those out as well so we can reuse those. We'll go ahead and set this one off to the side. But before I do, I just wanted to show you that this one, it's actually got provisions to add that heel toe shifter as well. So um, if you wanted to add the heel toe shifter that Arlen Ness has, you can do it with the factory shifter itself. But since we're swapping everything else out, we're gonna go ahead and do both of them. So before I install the shifter back on the bracket, I'm actually gonna go ahead and connect the two here. This comes with the needed bolts supplied. So all we've gotta do is bolt this thing together before we reinstall it. Just got two bolt holes there on the back. Go ahead and get these bolts started in there. Now we can go ahead and torque them down. Again, all of this is aluminum, so just a quarter turn should do, and they won't be going anywhere. Now we can grab our bracket back and reinstall our bushings. And this also has a washer. You're gonna wanna put that just right on the back side. Gives you a little bit of a buffer to make sure that that aluminum's not gonna come in contact with the aluminum bracket and wear stuff out prematurely. So we'll go ahead and get this started in here. And one quarter turn. Before you install the new shift linkage, make sure you take your time. This has Arlen Ness's name engraved on it, so you don't want that sitting upside down. So just pay very close attention to that. Also, you're gonna need some additional hardware. And thankfully, Arlen Ness has included everything you're gonna need. We've got a spacer from the front. That's gonna step it away from the shifter just a little bit. And on the back, it's actually got a couple washers. It's got a wave washer and also just a regular flat washer. What these are gonna do are just ensure that this thing never gets in a bind, so it's always got free range of motion, so you always have nice, smooth shifting. So, let's go ahead and start this into the bracket. Make sure the name is where it's supposed to be. And now we can grab the nut that holds all of this into place here. None of this stuff has to be super, super tight. You don't have to ham fist it, just a good quarter turn should do just fine. Now we're gonna take this, set it back up against the frame here, and we can go ahead and reinstall the mounting bolts. All right, with that in place, now we can go ahead and connect the rear portion of this linkage as well. And again, we'll have a spacer coming through from the front. And you'll have your wave washer and flat washer out back.
There we go. Now we, all we need to do is reinstall our floorboard. And again, this is probably my least favorite part, but hopefully it goes as smooth as the other side. So we'll start our pin back in again. About halfway through, I'm gonna slide that spring in from the back, slide the pin all the way through. got it about halfway through. Now I'll start this spring in from the back side here. Now I'll stand on my head so I can actually see the alignment. Almost there. I got it. And last but not least, we'll go ahead and reinstall our carter pin. All right, so we've got our new shifter installed, heel toe shifter, new floorboards, new shift linkage, new brake arm on the other side. Now let's go ahead and pop on some passenger foot pegs. The passenger foot peg replacement is fairly easy after you've done it a couple times. The first time you do this, it can be a little intimidating and a whole lot frustrating. So. You don't need a hammer, screwdriver, pair of pliers, none of that stuff. All we need is a simple dental pick. There's actually a wound piece of wire that forms a spring that holds this pin into place. This little booger can fly out of your hand, so be really careful. But all you need to do is apply a little bit of pressure on this thing, and it's gonna pop out of the groove. Once it starts to come out, just be really careful. It doesn't go flying anywhere, and as you can see, that thing is super, super tiny. There's really hardly anything there. So I'll set this down for just a second. With that removed, you can actually just push on the pin, give it a little pressure, and it pops right out. All of these foot pegs have a spring-loaded section to them. That's what keeps them in place as they pivot up and down. So same thing on this one. On the Arlen Nest components, you can actually see the spring itself. It's not covered up by the rubber. When you go to put these back on, make sure the rounded portion is towards the top. That's what's gonna allow this to roll up and down without catching that corner. The corner on the very bottom, that's actually gonna come in contact with the base and make sure that these stay fixed where they're supposed to be. So we'll grab our pin back, get everything lined up, give it a little pressure on that spring, start that pin through, and once it snaps all the way through, all you've got to do is take this little spring retainer and if you just kind of work it around with your finger just a little bit, it'll slide right back into place. And then you can use your dental pick again and get it lined up with the groove there. Make sure it drops into that groove all the way around. Once it drops in, you can give it a couple spins and I'd even push against it to make sure it's not going anywhere. That way you know you're not going to lose your brand new foot pegs. So. That'll wrap us up for today, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed our look at some of the new Arlen Nest components. We've had a blast upgrading our 2016 Victory Cross Country. We've got some more accessories to throw on this thing next week, so stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you comment with any of your questions. And until next time, everybody, my name's John with Cruiser Customizing. Ride safe.